lessons off the streets Rainfall washes away the memories in binary Salvation bathes us in its glow We look up to the sky
Hello and welcome everybody once again to another night here at the Overwatch Watchers Brawl. I am going to be your caster for the evening, the one, literal one, and only, Sir Waltham, the man with a face for radio and the voice for silent movies. I'll be keeping you guys entertained here during this game. Today we're going to be having the bout between Revolution and you, Waterloo, taking place, as I mentioned, in the loser's bracket match one. We don't really have any intro interviews today, but I can tell you folks at home that we will be starting on Ilios Control. As I mentioned, there is nobody else here to really kind of give me any banter. So just go ahead and talk about kind of the complexities of Ilios and the kind of things we might be able to expect seeing from these teams. Now, Ilios is kind of a, a diverse map. There's, I, I talk a lot about how there's a, a variety of different comps you can run on it. You can run something along the lines of Orisa Hog on well. It can be very sniper dependent on the ruins style map. Um, and then in Lighthouse, you can get a little bit more traditional with it. You can get to the 3-3, three, three. you can get to, um, uh, you have a little bit more variety there when it comes to, to what we typically see. Um, but I'm really kind of hoping that we get to see these teams branch out. I'm not necessarily looking for something that is strictly 3-3. Three, three. And I think that if these teams really want the opportunity to shine, they're definitely going to have to uh, kind of get in there and, you know, flex those muscles a little bit. Show us that, you know, it's not all tanks and support players on these teams, that the DPS are still alive and well. Now we'll see them pop off here. We are still waiting on just a few members to get logged in. With that being said, folks, no better time than now. Have a little bit of a break in the chat before the game. Go ahead and remind you guys that while you're watching these games, do not forget to vote on who you guys think the Twitch MVP of the night, evening, afternoon is going to be. So if you guys see anybody popping off on either end of the two teams, definitely let us know. Put it in chat. We'll announce it. Well, I guess I will announce it at the end of the game. Let you guys know how wrong I was in my hype for any given player. With that being said, it looks like we still only have a few members of the teams pushing forward. Uh, a few members of the team in chat, that is. Um, ready to go. We're still waiting for about half of Team Waterloo. I'm not quite sure what the deal is. Not a whole lot being said in chat, kind of trying to figure out where they are. Revolution, on the other hand, mostly ready. Um, both teams have their spectators in. I assume coaches or um, team captains, something along those lines, just to kind of give a little bit of overview onto the teams here. But looking historically at these teams, as we mentioned, or as I mentioned before, they're both going to be sitting in the loser's bracket you know, for this first match. And that's kind of a crucial spot to be in because it, it means that from here on out, you can make no more mistakes. And it, it really can be tense. It can really put the pressure on to these teams um, and really kind of cause them to, to have to play a flawless game if they want to take any chances of crawling back to even the end of the loser's bracket. With that being said, looking at the previous uh, rounds that knocked them in here, you e Waterloo ended up losing to the feeding troughs one to three. So they put up a little bit of an effort against the feeding troughs. They, they didn't certainly, they certainly did not get swept or completely knocked out. So they're not looking too bad. On the other hand, revolutions, they went two to three against citizens. So they, they came in very close against that game. Now, Citizens, as well as the Feeding Troughs, might have vastly different skill levels, so it might be a little bit harder to analyze where the teams really kind of fall within those two ranges. But definitely the numbers, if you're, if you're looking at all things equal, the numbers are definitely looking like Revolution, perhaps being a little bit more advantaged here in terms of wins and map differentials, things along those lines that you know so many analysts and casters like to talk about. Now, on the one hand, we are getting most of the players moved in here for the side of Revolution. It looks like we're going to be seeing the team be composed of Spades, Momo, Jai, Heike, Zemus, and Mac. Right now, we are just kind of waiting on them to get assorted. I am just saying those for my own benefit, so I don't fumble over the names because I don't know if you know this chat. They throw out some funky names out there. There are some really hard to pronounce names that just like two or three cat uh, brawls ago it, 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 it just was just like talking with a mouthful of jawbreakers it was it was rough you waterloo however not really 
willing to speak to their team comp until I see how uh, how the lobby is going to be filling out as we are still waiting on them. Um, looking like Revolution, not too bothered by that. They look like they're just kind of hanging out, chilling out in chat a little bit. I really wish we had someone to kind of chat with us, give us a little bit of the inside view as to what's going on through their minds. Don't really have a whole lot to go with here, but that's just how it goes sometimes. Similarly, the winner of this bracket match will be going up against the winner of next bracket match, which will be going on here in just two hours between Mean Green and the New England Whalers. Whalers excuse me. Uh, with that being said, man, it is taking these teams just so long to get in here, folks. And, you know, I can, I, I've kind of gone over the teams. I've gone over the map spreads. There's, there's really nobody to talk to, so like to just go ahead and talk a little bit about the community stuff you know we saw a lot of stuff come out from blizzard today if you guys haven't seen the the twitters and the you know the unit lost and the your overwatch posts about it they've they've actually released a new baptiste comic a new baptiste lore strip it's, it's not a comic it's a uh it's a lore story so definitely some stuff to keep watching out for there some people are talking about it's teasing a new uh player or a new character that's kind of in the works. I, I don't know about that. I'm still I'm still on the fence. But it's looking like I am finally getting bailed out to, from being alone here. We hopping into the chat with me. It's going to be poor Zach. Poor Zach, thank you for joining us. How are you feeling today? Uh, I'm feeling pretty good right now. A little upset that I'm a bit late. Sorry about that. Uh, lost track of time there. It is perfectly all right. You know, it's, it's often said better late than never. And... You know, my voice appreciates it. I, I didn't. It, it would have been rough if I had to to kind of go through this, uh, you know, solo. It's a it's a lot of strain on a on a caster's voice, especially uh, especially an old man like myself. <laughs> yeah, no, I wouldn't. I wouldn't leave you out there in the middle of nowhere like that. Don't worry about it. Well, it is vastly appreciated. And just for those of you at home, I will going be ahead, going ahead and doing the color commentary for. Um, anybody who's savvy on the lingo zach i'm anticipating going to be doing the play-by-play -play. didn't have a whole lot of time to kind of get this organized but you know no, it's something, fine something to keep eyes on ears up for um zach do you have any opinion on these two teams going forward into ilios um going into ilios i remember watching a game with revolution and they went two and one on the map and i think the only round they dropped was i believe it was ruins so We'll see how they do today. They looked pretty dominant on it uh, in the two that they were. I believe one was 100 to 15. Then they got 15 to 100. And then uh, 100 to, I think it was really close. Or no, it was 100 to 30 something. So they looked pretty dominant on the match. So I'm expecting it to go to Revolution side. Yeah, I was talking a little bit about the uh, the the point spread for these teams that uh, in the games that got them kind of knocked down here. Uh, Revolution was very competitive to Citizens, whereas we looked at Waterloo, they didn't necessarily hold up to the feeding troughs as well. Waterloo went 1-3, to three, when Revolutions went 2-3. to three. That's, you know, a significant improvement considering it did have to go into overtime. Yeah, I, I have to completely agree. It was a great match to watch between Revolution and Citizens. I really thought it was anybody's game there. Really just came down to that one round of Busan and just very unfortunate the way it went for Revolutions. Yeah, well, they certainly will have their opportunity to make it up here in droves. We're going to be hopping on to Ilios. The first map going to be Lighthouse. What do you expect to see here, Zach? Any any guesses? Uh, Not too different. Maybe you might see some DPS, but I'm not expecting it. Who knows, though? Uh, Maybe they might pull Moira out just in case of that happening and a Winston from the GOATS variants. But I'm expecting to see some pretty, pretty normal GOATS here uh, just from the side of Revolutions. Yeah, yeah, I would expect that that's perhaps going to be uh, reciprocated on both ends. Uh, this this is kind of the more conventional of the three sub maps. You know, you, you see the Arissa Hog more on Well, you see the Snipers more on Ruins. This one you can kind of stick to the fundamentals, your your bread and butters, your biscuits and gravy, whatever you prefer. Um, but it's it's very stock in my opinion. Yeah, it looks like that's exactly what's going to happen, actually but there might be a reaper out on the side of waterloo <laughs> no okay <laughs> yeah i would would not expect the reaper to come out vexonus perhaps trying to get a little bit uh yeah. baby with it but not gonna fly we're gonna see the teams roll out in those classic triple triples with the zenyatta reinhardt as you know that flex support main tank 
Yep, and it looks like they're gonna start coming around, usual backside. Revolution making their way farther to the point, though. Really just taking their time. ATT is getting aggressive here. Vex is going low. Not too much happening right now. They're just slowly backing their way over to the point. ATT trying to get the boop out. So Revolution's gonna be able to get onto the point. Oh, two people drop on the side of Uwarlu. Three people drop. Simu is able to get a boop off on Elect. And that's gonna get them the point. That was pretty solid from the side of Revolution. What do you think happened there? How do you think they completely took that point away? I think it really started by Revolution just getting the better ground first. They they turned in quicker than the side of uh, Waterloo, so they were able to get onto the point. Waterloo had to kind of get aggressive if they didn't want to immediately lose that point. And when you have to get aggressive, there's more openings for you to lose, um, or to, to make mistakes and get the advantage taken upon. Mm-hmm, Lexify up here taking the high ground. Shadow coming out for Mac, able to get Vexus. Badges in there really deep. Vex is down. Ve uh, badges are down now. Lax getting d -mec. Everything's going out. They're not even going to try to stagger him. They just know that they want to get him out of the fight right now. Going to send him going all the way back again. Very good on the side of Revolution. Yeah, absolutely. Waterloo, um, not nearly as efficient in building those ults as, re as we're seeing Revolution. Going to be having five on the board for this next fight. And Waterloo pretty even. They didn't invest that Earth Shatter as Mac did. Which really, that Earth Shatter comboed really well with Seamus. I believe they knocked badges out of the way to get that Earth Shatter great opening that eventually ended up uh, closing some kills. Mm -hmm. I think we're about to see a lot of ultimates right now. They're stuck in this little room right there, which would be really good. Riley popped. Grav came out. Self destruct another Grav on the side of Waterloo. Everybody's just using their ults right now, just trying to get some value out of it. Nothing really happening. Lax going very low, though. He's gonna have decided to pop his mech just so that we can hurry up and get back in. Heike gonna be taken out. This could go all the way back over to Water Waterloo side now. Mac, Jay, all down now. At the back of the point, Momo just getting picked off right there, and they're gonna be able to take the point. Yeah, it's not gonna quite be a full zero to one hundred for the side of Revolution. A lot of ults invested, as you said, you got it right on the money there, saying that a lot of ults were going to be used. We're gonna be seeing both Ryans have their Earth Shatters up for the coming fight. And you know, I think Mac and Simus, they've shown some solid coordination so far in this first map, so I think that they might be able to utilize it if they're able to kind of manipulate badges a little bit. And yeah, for sure, but Momo getting a great pickoff on a Nexus and a big shatter coming out. And a counter shatter also coming out from the side of uh, revolutions but the shatter just from badges was way bigger so of course they're going to be able to win that fight you have so many people on the ground not able to do anything it's it's probably going to mean bad for your team yeah absolutely and it looked like the side of revolution maybe even got a little too aggressive a little too assertive with it once they saw that momo got the kill on to nexify they kind of got a little bit out of position they felt they had a little bit more free reign of the map when they really didn't given that grab getting massive results yes and grab is out on the side of waterloo and of course momo popping his transcendence not too much coming out for that another grab and another transcendence coming out with this time a diva bomb's been dedicated to it there's been a shatter badges in the corner down as well as at and it looks like this might be going into the favor of revolutions finally and if they win this fight they're most likely going to win the map here Another two down at running all the way back to point. They were chasing down Namo. Doesn't look like he's going to be able to hold it by himself. Not surprised. It's a 1v like five. <laughs> yeah, absolutely a tough spot. If they're able to make it back, there are a few ultimates that Waterloo can really use to their advantage. It's going to be questionable, though. They're going to have to really rush it. Oh, Badges oh. just misses the entry. Just hitting that middle barrier area, unable to get inside the zone. That's got to be frustrating. Yeah, he was really close to that. Um, I, I don't think they could have probably made a comeback, but it would have been interesting to see him go in there and see what they could have done. Yeah, absolutely. They did, they did have a few ults that I think may have been kind of some swing factors, but it still would have been kind of on a wing and a prayer moving forward. Uh, but now we're going to be going on to Ruins. And, you know, we talked about Ruins, I believe. You mentioned that it was Revolution's weaker map when they played it um, in a prior game. So... Who knows, maybe we see a different result come out this time. Both teams still gonna be running the triple-triple. A little disappointed in that. Love to see some DPS play. Three, two, one. 
Yeah, it would have been nice to see some on this map in particular, but I, I expect if we do make our way over to Well, that we will probably see more of the DPS. Looks like they're going to be heading over to the side of Mega. They're going to fight for this Mega right now. Mac and Badge is just heading face to face into each other. At, he's super aggressive, always up high, trying to just get as many shots as he can. Looks like they're rotating onto point now. Mac really just swing his heart out, but Vexus gets picked off, but Mac is picked off now too. One for one trade going on right now, but what would you rather have, the Brig or the main tank? It looks like they're neither gonna have a main tank, so this revolution is just taking the point right now. They're not gonna be able to contest it at all because of that lack of a main tank, and they're just gonna have to back up. And that was almost a very dangerous situation for Revolution. Demo got brought dangerously low at the very beginning of the fight. Was not cleaned up upon. That allowed the Zarya to get that healing, to get those shield regens in. And, you know, Demo we saw get those early initial kills uh, into this fight. And, you know, if, if that had continued on, if Demo had continued to get that value, not punishing them would have been a massive mistake on the side of Revolution. Didn't turn out that way, luckily. It's going to be Revolution with a couple ultimates on their side to work with as well. Yep. At trying to boop someone off right now. Ike using his rally shatter from the side of badges. Vex just gets picked off though. So they're gonna have to just stay in there. They don't have the rally to push up any further. So now they're backing up and now they're just getting picked off along with badges next fight. And the list will just keep going on and on right now. Looks like they're gonna stall lacked a little bit. Just a tiny bit. Can't really stall him too much. He's really close to their spawn, so they're just gonna take him out after a couple seconds. But another pretty good round coming out from uh out of revolution yeah it's, it's a risky gambit when you talk about trying to stall that uh, diva so close to point you don't want to get too close to where you one of your members can get accidentally picked by a zenyatta right click or something along those lines um but you still do want to try to get as much time off the clock as possible Ooh. oh that was perfectly timed you could see high key sitting into the corner just waiting to hit that stun so that way bad or uh so that way mac can throw out his chatter but they're investing a lot more ults now. This grab not really quite catching anybody, but I think they're still going to be able to win the fight. A grab was also invested by the side of Waterloo to not see any avail. They're just taking this away right now. And just a great play coming out from High Key and Mac to coordinate that uh, stun into a shatter. That was, that was pretty good. I saw him hiding in the corner. I knew he must have been trying to be up to something. Yeah, absolutely. We saw Mac get that shatter. And then also we saw Lack throw that Diva Bomb up into the air. Mac gets booped up, still has their head on enough of a swivel to really reposition their shield, not get caught out, not get killed by that bomb. Really crucial in helping win that fight and, you know, furthermore winning the round here. Yeah, very impressive by the side of Revolution there. Again, uh, I, I think that they just seem to have a little more coordination possibly, but there were times where there was some big shatters coming out like this one right here that I think got them uh, the fight for Waterloo. Really good shatter here. It looks like Ad's gonna be the one taking everything. Oh, he got the boof on space. Okay, that's cool. <laughs> yeah, not not a bad time to pop that healing amp right as the entirety of your team goes down, keeping them up just a little bit longer. Gonna definitely help a little bit. Um, but folks, you know, you saw who the play, or you heard at least who the play of the game was. But don't forget, we still want to hear your votes in the Twitch MVP chat, so definitely let us know down below who you think is popping off. It's only been the first game. I always recommend, you know, hanging, hanging on to that vote for, you know, it's two or three games. Wait wait for it to develop a little bit, and then if there's anybody you like, you really see just kind of popping heads or, you know, getting some fat ultimates, let us know in the chat below. Thanks, guys. And with that being said, we're now going to be waiting on the map pick and ban phase as well as the hero pick and ban phase. Uh, Zach, do you think we're going to see anything that kind of shakes the triple triple uh, composition come out here? Uh, I don't think we're going to see too much that's going to ban it because both teams seem to be very comfortable on it. Revolution just seems to be a little bit better at it. So I'm not sure if maybe Waterloo might have something up their sleeve that they might try to play out. Like maybe the, uh, they got a triple or a quad DPS lineup that they feel really comfortable on and think that they can do or maybe a bunker. So maybe they'll try to like mess it up a little bit, but I really don't see uh, either of these teams trying to take away from the regular 3-3 that we're so used to seeing. Uh, I, don't, I honestly don't know. I think Waterloo showing, you know, a bit of comfort on the triple-triple, but I don't know if it's, well, based on what we've seen, it's not as efficient as Revolution's triple-triple. I think that, mm -hmm. you know, they could try it for a map or two, uh, well, a map more, but... 
any more than that, you might want to consider, you know, trying to throw some curveballs towards Revolution, trying to disable their ability to play in that style. Even if it means you're taking a hit to your team comp, maybe you catch them off guard, maybe you catch them in a way you didn't want to. Uh, but we'll just have to see as the, as the, I guess, the matches develop a little bit. But I'm going to go ahead and hear it. First map to be banned is going to be Paris. No big surprise there. Not at all. Uh, I was really hoping to see Paris, but you never really get to see Paris too much now. Um, mm -hmm. It's like they're taking a second to really pick their map. They're really thinking of this one, which isn't a bad thing. You know, it's great to just sit there and make sure, you know, what map should we definitely do? What map are we the most comfortable on? Maybe there's a little bit of uh, back and forth between, well, I think we should do this map. But with how the, maybe the any team's playing, they want to try something else that's suited a little more towards their play style and they know the map better. But right now, it just kind of looks like uh, they're just going to go back and forth in it with themselves and just see what they want to do. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, it's kind of tough for those of you who perhaps haven't caught our previous games before in this specific tournament for the month. Uh, the maps we still do have remaining in the pool uh, for the Assault maps going to be Hanamura and Anubis. You know, some potential there. We see Hanamura a lot in this tournament, it seems. Um, for the Control maps, we're going to still have Li Zhang and Oasis. We're not going to be seeing either of those next as you don't play two consecutive map types. or You don't play the map site twice consecutively. Um, for the Escort maps, we're going to be seeing Junker and Dorado, should the teams pick them. And then Eichenwald and Hollywood going to be our hybrid maps of the day of the month, I guess, is probably the more better way to say it. But um, either way, I don't think that there's necessarily anything in these that is, you know, triple, triple exclusive. You know, I don't think that we're seeing King's Rose, you know, levels of uh, mm -hmm. GOAT style comps. I think, you know, we'll probably see a little bit if we go to Eichenwald. Uh, Hanamura, if there's no snowball effect, we'll see it at least once. Um, so I think there's there's some potential here for the teams uh, to kind of roll out in those different comps. Um, but it, it's not unpredictable that they run those triple triples. Yeah, for sure. Uh, Rev Revolution really, uh, I, I don't think I've seen them ever play with a lot of like DPS. They, they mostly stick to like a GOAT style. Um, I remember seeing them one time playing kind of a bunker GOATs. Mm -hmm. uh, where they swapped out the, um, I think they swapped out the Zarya for Hog and the Rhyme for Arisa, and that was it. Looks like they're going to be deciding to go to Hollywood, which is pretty good uh, for the side of Revolution. They did really good on that map, being able to full hold citizens. Uh, well, that's uh, perhaps a little bit of a bold pick, um, but you know we talk about you know the the kind of comps and styles we might see come out of Hollywood. And there's always the the potential if a team is really you know dps friendly that they'll run the widow on second point you know there's so much high ground and so many long sight lines that having to deal with that widow can really be a burden given what we've seen from these two teams so far however i'm not really sure i'd expect it to come out maybe from waterloo um but it's it's still not something i'm, I'm highly anticipating we are going to be seeing lucio safe so the speedy dj definitely going to still be available as a choice into the game I'm waiting on Revolution to pick the map side, though. Oh, no, they picked offense. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, it looks like they said they want offense to save Lucio. And then Waterloo going to ban a hero. Uh, I'm really curious as to what they'd ban here. Because I'm pretty sure they know that Revolution really wouldn't want to switch it up and play any DPS. So maybe they ban the Brig, possibly? Well, it's kind of an interesting play and counterplay here, right? So if you if you just completely prevent Revolution from playing that triple triple comp on defense, you would you you might expect they might lean on something a little bit heavier, such as the bunker comp, which in that case you'd have to you know have characters that are really good at diving or eliminating the Bastion in some way, mitigating it in in any way possible. So it's kind of a if we ban one. Uh, composition type they will respond with another one which we will have to answer with a third composition type it's it's kind of a a, a weird rock paper scissors it's not it's not like a, a triangle it's a it's i don't even know what to call it. it's like a triforce or something it's, it's weird yeah they're gonna ban sombra very interesting okay hmm indeed i'm wondering if there's any particular reason for that because sombra can be very efficient against you know the the bunker comps that we were talking that i was talking about so 
curious if that's going to play into any effect here or if it's just one of those things that, you know, they don't really want to get rid of anything crucial because they'd be getting rid of it for themselves. So they're just going to, you know, ban something irrelevant for them. Probably true. The teams are readying up right now. Looks like we're about to be heading in to Hollywood, which is should be pretty exciting here. Uh, I'm excited to see what Waterloo is about to bring to the table against Revolution, knowing that they have full health on this map. They will yeah, be on offense first, though, however. Yeah, it's going to be a little bit of the precedent being set forth here. Um, yeah, I'm I'm wondering if, aside from, you know, just the standard triple-triple, if we're going to be seeing any Ana played instead of Zen. Ana can be a little bit more favored here on the defense uh, in those triple-triples because of this little high ground area. The office is um, right in front of the, or right behind the choke, depending on how you're looking at it. Um, but really has those line of sights as well. If Diva's not being played, can utilize her cooldowns to an amazing degree. Um, Diva, you know, hasn't been banned, obviously, so it's still a potential. But if, you know, there's a fill in, such as a May or a McCree, which I'm not saying we'll see, you probably won't. Um, but they'll usually fill in for that spot of the Diva. But it looks like it's going to be Waterloo rolling out with, at least to start, a bunker comp. I like it. Yeah, and you'll see a fairly good combo like this with like the mercy and the bastion baptiste really can uh, interchange out the ash and your off tank to uh, probably either maybe if you want to go hog with your off tank or ash you can really just uh go with anybody but yeah no this is a really good team comp and now that they know that they don't have the sombra they they can sit up there just looking pretty and they just gotta somehow get over to them uh and then on the side of revolution they're just gonna they're just gonna stay on their three three you know they're not gonna go venturing out into waters they don't know yeah, and I mean, the Sombra's not in effect, so we're not going to be seeing any scouting coming out from the side of Revolution. Uh, so they may have to take a turn back once they see the comp coming out here just to try to, you know, pivot a little bit, not get too caught off guard. You know, it looks like they're taking a little slow. Oh, yep, they've noticed that there's the bunker comp. They're going to go all the way back to spawn. Possibly a dive approach to this. We got the Winston. Two DPS. Yeah, so they're going to be going for a divey approach. Shield break with the Hanzo and the Farah. Just trying to get some damage in from a distance to try to mitigate that Bastion as much as possible. Right now, just poking at him from up top. Seamus going low. Not quite able to get the pickoff, though. High key and Seamus are just coming around from the side here, trying to take away some of the attention. They're just looking for that one pick. That one pick will make all the difference so they can go in. Mac missed the jump to get up top, unless he was just going to try to get onto the point. Big anti-nade! Getting three people, including that Bastion. Damo able to get high key and Momo with that TNT. Vexus taking out Simus, and that's going to be a one fight for Waterloo. Yeah, we talk about, you know, oftentimes splitting the attention of the defenders. You know, the Bastion can only point in one direction. The Orisa shield itself is also a little bit omnidirectional, or at least 180 degrees covered. Um, but the, the way the tanks were positioned and the way the Farah Mercy were positioned, you could kind of shield from both of them at the same time. Not much to shield from from a Winston at that range, but still, um, I think I would have liked to see, you know, perhaps the tanks waiting at the choke or media room to get a little bit better of a cross angle on that dive. But it looks like they're going to be a little bit more coordinated and actually be stacking up kind of in the same area. Ooh. Damo getting another pick onto high key. Damo's doing really good right now, hitting a lot of his shots. Thank goodness he's getting that Mercy damage, but it's just being able to take him out that much more quicker because with that Mercy on the other side too, they could be able to just heal him up for a second and go back right back into the fight. Haiki's actually gonna go to switch to the Genji. Yeah, and you know, by the way that Damo's been performing here, I can't say I blame. I'm gonna already have that Bob up. And you know, I was a little bit curious as to why they may not run the Junkrat considering this dive can be so easily countered by Junkrat, but seeing the performance by Damo really makes sense here. Yeah, and really when you go with that dive, he's just able to use shotgun sometimes and get him away. Nano's coming in onto Mac. Bob's been thrown out. Vex is going to pop his ultimate. Not too much happening right now. Well, there's a lot happening, but not too many kills in the feed right now, I should say. A lot of ults being popped out. High key getting taken out by Damo again. Mac going primal. Just absolutely targeting the Bastion, trying to just get him away from the team. Spade's been demac to Vexus. Able to take out Jay. Mac taking out Vexus now. Just trades all across the board. Badge taking out Spades. Rez is coming out from each side, but it looks like that this is Waterloo's one fight again. 
Yeah, and that was a long time just to build up the one nano from Momo to pop onto Mac, and they still didn't get anything for it. They didn't get a tick, they didn't get anything. They have the dragons coming up, which they might be able to try to use to dislodge Vexonia, Vexonus, and they're gonna try to do it now. Yeah, I think that they know they gotta target that immortality field, and they were able to just get that just in time for Haiki to be able to get the kill. Badges able to get Seamus before the spawn. Bomb taking out the Bongo. Haiki getting Damo. They're just sitting on the point right now, just trying to make sure that they can't get any of the percentage. Jay's going in, lacked. Getting d so he's just gonna pop that self-destruct. You'll see that happen a lot. Spades also getting d -maxed. It looks like Revolution might be able to take this fight. Haiki is taken down by the Baby Diva. He's gonna stay on point. They see the Bastion, but he's gonna pop his oh, tank no. mode. This could be it. Oh, the oh, sleep! He's able to get back into the mech with the sleep. Anti, great sleep and anti need coming out from Momo. That was amazing right there. They're targeting down that lamp. Bob's been thrown out by Damo. Oh, there's just so much stall on this point right now with this Hammond. Another dragon coming through. Doesn't look like it's going to be able to get anybody. I keep popping his ultimate now. He's able to get two off that. Jay also just got two. So right now it looks like that the fight has finally been secured for revolutions and they're going to take this point. Yeah, and I kind of like the logic behind Badges switching to the Hammond. Even though it didn't hold out for them, they still bought quite a bit of time with it. And, you know, you're going to switch off the Arisa anyway. You're probably not going to hold in a bunker style on Streets phase. It's just not that practical on these types of maps. Um, so you're going to lose that old charge anyway. You may as well go to something that can get to point a little bit faster. You know, gain a resource in exchange for one that you're not even giving up. You're gaining time for, you know, old charge, which you're not, you, you wouldn't be able to use in the next fight anyway. So I really like it, um, and just a massive amount of utility from the cooldowns and ults that were really brought out from the side of Waterloo. Yep, and then Diva Bomb coming out. Meanwhile, Max trying to boop everyone around. It's able to get at. Damo being taken down right now by Simus. They're going in. It looks like Vex is also being able to get taken down high key. Just absolutely hitting it with that whiplash right there. Black, they're not even going to try to stall him because if they stall him at that point, they ain't going to move. You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. And now we're going to be seeing um, Momo have that nano boost online. It's going to be the only ult ready to go right at the gate of this fight. Uh, badge is pretty close to that Earth Shatter. However, they may be able to catch them off guard. We're going to have to see how that plays out, especially without that main tank right up in the front. It's going to get repositioned and get ready to go. Looks like the nano mech. They're going to be able to get over to Badges. Badge is getting taken down right now. They're trying to catch off at. He looked like he was a little too aggressive there, a little out of position for them, so they were going to jump on that chance as soon as they got it. Lance getting d right off the point. Just going to slowly push up here, see what they can get. Just try to pick off as many people as they can before they can make it to this point, and I don't think they're going to be able to get a second fight Waterloo on this, so they're just going to have to get ready, get out of that spawn, and group up for the next fight on the next objective. Yeah, fortunately, they do have a little bit of a piggy bank to work with here. They're going to have the Rally, the Transcendence, as well as a couple tank ults online with the rest not too far off. So they're going to have, you know, a little bit to burn the clock with. They have about two minutes worth of hold here. They really bought themselves a lot of credit on that first point, but Street Space did not look nearly as dominant. No, it looks like they're going in right now. Spades is over on the side. Good grab coming out from Jay. Grab coming out on the other side, too, from Damo. But the self destruct should be able to pick off Damo. Another self destruct in the middle. Not quite able to get anybody. I believe that was Lag's self destruct that didn't get anybody. They're just backing up right now. The sound barrier coming out from At. Space is in there pretty deep right now, but he's not able to get D Mac. But Lack is able to get D Mac. The nano coming out on the Mac. Taking out badges on the point. Jay, super high charge right now. Completely takes out At. Vex is in the back. Able to get collapsed onto. Nexify. Also out of the fight now by Jay, who is on really high charge, and he's just absolutely pushing up right now. He's showing his dominance. Yeah, well, you don't want to let that charge go to waste as Zarya. If you can build up grab with, you know, a 60, uh, 60 rate energy charge, you're going to take that. You definitely don't want to throw that away if you've given the opportunity. But again, the aggression coming out. Big slam. Big shatter. Oh, my goodness. Big shatter coming out from Mac. That's going to be able to pick off a couple people here. And it looks like that that's actually going to clean up the fight completely. Mac with a great shatter to just let his whole team clean up that fight, and they're going to finish with time on the board. Yeah, Very this... impressed by the side of Revolution there at the end. Good, good shatter for Mac. This really goes back to what we were kind of talking about a little bit. We saw the, the mix-up in comp from 
the side of Waterloo, and they performed really well on it. You know, they didn't they didn't perform a flawless game, obviously, because they didn't hold first point, but they came really close. I thought that once we saw the, I believe it was Damo pop that Bastion ult, we were going to see, you know, the D.Va get knocked out of mech, or at least get killed before she could re-mech. Um, the tanks get taken out, and then there would be nothing, and it would it would go to Waterloo with giving up, you know, two ticks, maybe 80%, something along those lines. They just weren't quite able to close it out. But then when they switched to the 3-3, three, three, they look significantly more meager. I think that it would be really nice to see some more of these comps come out from Waterloo, really kind of change that up, because I, I really liked what they were doing more so on those non-traditional, non-standard comps. Yeah, I'm going to have to agree with you there because they definitely looked better when they were on that bunker comp and then they switched to that 3-3. And when it just came down to the pure matchup, Revolution just seems to always be a step ahead. They're going to have that fight. And if they don't have that fight, they're definitely going to win the next one. So you got to think about it. Do we really want to risk going something that we haven't like practiced so much on? Because right now, what we were hoping would work isn't really working as well as we thought. So that's definitely something to think about coming into this match or this uh, this round. Yeah, not necessarily sure what Waterloo's going to be running. I'm doubtful that we're going to be seeing the, the characters in spawn actually roll out. Are we seeing the switches? Is it onto the triple triple? Um, they're going to stay with the tracer. They also have a Hammond. I imagine that they were just trying to scout, which I think they were. Uh, yeah, they're going to go back. They're going to switch themselves to the 3-3. Three, three. Only difference is on the side of Revolution, they got that on it, which, of course, hitting those anti nades are very, very good. Yeah, it's really going to be on to Lact to really kind of mitigate those anti-nades and just get as much benefit as possible. Next fight gets taken out by Mac. I believe he was hit with an anti-nade, so he couldn't really get much done there. They're going to just try to rotate all the way around, but right now they can't do much until their Zen comes back. If they're able to actually get a pickoff here, that'd be pretty good for them, but I don't really see them doing much without their Zen. Right now, they're just kind of holding a certain place in the sky. And yep, there goes At. They're down to a good anti-nade coming out. And everyone's just starting to get cleaned up now. Uh, Mac going in there. Just firing away, zapping away over badges and lacked. Lacked, the last one in there. Getting d -mecked. I imagine they're going to stagger him. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's a boring lack. That's, that's a brutal stagger. They, they are still not letting up. That is ugly. There's obviously nowhere for the baby diva to jump off of, so Lax just looking <laughs> absolutely frustrated here. And Mac, pop the primal. Uh, pop the primal. I don't know if that was a, a BM or a misclick, but right now they're just trying to keep Seamus alive because he got stuck by that pin. And that actually could have been what got them this uh, this point now because they're down two because they got that primal and they were being super aggressive there. Jay popping out his uh, grab though, trying to get something out of it. High key also using his rally. Vex is using his rally now. Next to five with the transcendence now coming to an end. Spades just drops it right onto badges, but it's not going to be enough because now they're just cleaning everybody else up. Next to five, Lack, Damo, Vex, just everybody taking a body on their way out, but. <laughs> Yeah, I absolutely like that. I, I love the way Damo gets everybody inside that small cafe area and just drops a grab. You know, yeah. you, there's four people thinking, oh, we can collapse on this. They're trapped. But then, no, all of a sudden, you drop a grab, and they're the sardines in the can and really puts the pressure on them, on top of already having two or three members down. That was nice. That was pretty good on the side of Waterloo there. Looks like he just slowly pushed his cart. Simu's staying high in the air right now. Of course, Mac just swinging over by the cart, doing what he does best. Left click, left click, left click. Vex gets taken down. Black throws a bomb to the back, trying to get something out of that. They're just contesting the point right now. Damo with the high charge. He doesn't really want to lose that, so they're going to decide to back off here. They might just be giving it up quite yet. Waiting for the guy to come back. Vex is almost on his way back now. They can get a little more aggressive now that they got the brig back. He's going to keep firing over onto Mac. Shatter coming out. Mac able to get Vexus. Mac. Oh, he still got someone with the shatter on the rooftops. Actually able to even um just de mac him, kill him completely in general. Badge is down. Next fight down by Momo and Spades. They're gonna push him all the way through this cafe here, all the way back to spawn. Yeah, and this is uh, it may have only looked like a fight, a, a mistake that lost one fight, but it's really going to cost them a lot here. As we saw a lot of ults come out from Waterloo, I believe, if I remember correctly, we saw 
three or four come out. And yeah, they're gonna have a little bit of ult charge, but it's definitely gonna be revolution with a lot more to go. And you know, that's gonna perhaps be the tide turn in this next fight too. Yeah, Momo engaging with the transcendence. Probably knowing that Dom's not quite at his grab yet, so he thinks he can use that just safely there. Push them all the way back to spawn again. Just hold them there. He tries to Mac tries to do a shatter in their spawn. They are feeling very, very good about themselves right now. They've used two ultimates now, and they really haven't gotten a pick except just holding them in spawn for an extra 10 or so seconds. But Momo able to get the pick on Adamo. That's pretty big. Shatter coming out gets Jay. Badge is able to get the pin onto Mac. Spade's going down by Badges here. Lax getting de mech Everyone's just kind of collapsing there onto the point. Not quite sure what to do yet. They're going to decide to back off. Lax getting taken out, which is preferably what you would want to happen because the longer you're not in that mech the longer you're fairly useless for uh with two minutes left now they got a lot of alts to work with on both sides so this next fight could be the determiner yeah a little bit more defensive coming in from the side of waterloo so perhaps they could use that to kind of cancel out some big ultra to be coming out here mm -hmm. oh Two self-destructs coming through, two kills on the side of spades for spades, and then Lacked able to pick one off as well. Grab came in from Damo, Ooh. but it looks like that Revolution's gonna be able to clean up this fight, now taking down badges as well. Mac goes for the pin and he's able to hit it onto Lacked, I believe. Next five, Vexus at Damo, all on the point. Lacked getting taken out though. They should decide to back up right now, I imagine. That's exactly what they're gonna do. It's only a minute left. They got their shatter. They got sound be sound barrier. Uh, but really, alts on both sides are looking pretty scarce now. But you got a transcendence and a rally and almost a sound barrier. A set of revolutions. It's gonna be interesting to see how they attack this one. Yeah, they certainly will. And right now, it's it's very peculiar. The, the side of revolution has been very aggressive in getting up kind of into the face, as we saw doing those full spawn presses. That's, a, that's some dominance coming through there. They're feeling pretty confident with themselves. Yeah, I'm going to have to agree with you there. Mac just throwing over that uh, little hay bale. Uh, the self-destruct came in from, I believe it was Lack. No, not Lack. It was Spades. Uh... Lax getting taken out again though. Grav coming out from Jay. Everyone in there is just absolutely dying at the speed of sound. They're gonna push all the way up to their spawn. They only have 10 seconds left. There's not gonna be any way for them to get to the point. Vex is just gonna pop his rally and just hope he can make his way there. He just gets taken out immediately when you're all alone by yourself. You're not gonna quite be able to make it Lax. Going all the way back, he might be able to make it. He is able to make it in time. At there now too. Badge is swinging his heart out. High key though, he's getting super aggressive because he's like, you know, you're only like three people and they're gonna be able to take the map off of that because they weren't able to make it back full force yeah once again it's just some dominance coming out on this triple triple from the side of revolution and overall it, it it just seemed like they were a little bit more composed they knew when to get aggressive and we can really see that pay off you know they, they see their openings as well as how forceful to get on those openings and that's what it takes at the end of the day mm-hmm Waterloo also, uh, I think they did recognize at that first point when he did pop primal and they got way too aggressive. They mm -hmm. were able to punish that, you know? So Waterloo definitely is able to realize when they're getting a little too aggressive and they're able to go in on that. But every other time, it just seems like Revolutions kind of understands like, okay, we made a mistake there. Let's get aggressive when we know we can, not just take that risk. Because when they take that risk, Waterloo's probably going to be able to collapse on them. Right, and you know, I think that uh, it, it's funny. We can learn a lot about the the way Revolution plays through their one lost fight on their uh, defending side. Because we saw them, you know, the, the pin went on to the Lucio. And so we saw, I think it was Momo. We saw the main tank player on that Winston trying to just knock that Reinhardt away, just preventing the kill coming through from the Lucio. They see that when they make a mistake, they have to be explosive. They have to kind of capitalize because if it goes into a slow fight 5v6 they're not going to win it and they kind of have that mindset they know that they need to be explosive to make up for those types of mistakes so really um it, it shows their play style as a whole despite that being the one fight they lost for sure and i think that really going into this next one depending on what map they pick revolution could be able to take it i think they decided to ban hanamura which is what we saw Revolution play on last time. 
against citizens. So Marley right now, just really looking at what they have in their storage and hoping they can pull out the right map to get them a win because right now they're gonna have to pull off a reverse sweep, I believe, because I think it is 2-0 now in the favor of Revolution. Yeah, Waterloo looking down the barrel of what is seeming to be a smoking gun right now. It is a little bit tough for them. They're gonna be choosing to go to Anubis. And, you know, <laughs> third time might be the charm. Maybe we'll see some snipers come out on this map. Yeah, Anubis, Anubis first point is really good if you know that the enemy isn't really running a bunker but instead they're running like a uh, a 3-3 even if they have that winston you're still going to be able to do that damage from far away and if the winston tries to get on you you have so many movable mobile characters that they're going to be able to get that winston if not everyone is with them and they're going to have to play near the point so it looks pretty good right now uh for waterloo if they decide to do that um 4 -1 -1. Uh, it looks like Revolutions is going to save Sombra, and they want to start off on offense. Yeah, Revolution seems to, uh, as they play in game, they you know choose their sides. They like to get aggressive to start, so they're going to be playing on the offense. Makes a lot of sense given this teams. But now the Lucio bat is going to be coming through. That that's uh, that's an interesting throw in there. Yeah, that's going to really put a dent in uh revolutions there because revolution there i keep adding an s to it my apologies uh it's gonna really put a dent in their team comp because without that speed boost to get you through there fast if you're playing a 3-3 you're gonna kind of be forced to adapt and go to maybe a 2-2-2 two, two, two or a little more dps heavy comp because now all those tanks you have aren't as mobile as they used to be so who knows? We might be seeing something really, really interesting coming out here from Revolution if uh, they're going to decide to go that route, or they might just replace the Lucio with a Moira or an Ana, what have you, and still just try to go in off of that. But it's going to be a lot harder without their Lucio. Yeah, I mean, we can we can certainly hope that some change-ups are going to happen here. We're seeing, you know, slight variants come through, you know, the Winston instead of the Rhyme, the Ana instead of the Zen, but I want to see some some massive change-ups change on my end, personally. I don't want to see just, you know, the, the triple triple anymore. I want to see, you know, give me, the, give me the quad DPS. Give me a bunker comp. Give me anything. I'm, I'm ready for it. I'm, I'm good to go on that. Yeah. Just like, just like the last match on uh, Hollywood. I loved watching Damo just getting those kills. Speaking oh, yeah. of Damo, he was getting those really good kills. Unfortunately, his team's 0-2, but you can still vote for the MVP down below. You can look at who you think's been really been popping off here. Maybe you think it might've been Momo because he's been getting some of those clutch nades maybe he's been getting those great picks on zen you know maybe you want to go for spades because you've seen him use his self-destruct and be able to pick up a couple kills with that a few times you know it's really up to you but like i said down below go ahead and vote for your mvp it could be anybody doesn't matter win or lose whoever you think is doing good they're doing good yeah i always like to tell the people at home that it's them telling us casters how wrong we are about who's popping off because <laughs> you know the cast casters are always wrong zach I, I, it's it's just kind of the way it goes no, yeah 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 for sure uh, <laughs> you know the viewers at home definitely gonna gonna be telling us what's for at the end so make sure your vote counts in that twitch vote um but yeah definitely excited to get into anubis here might be our last match of this or our last game of this match i'd be be pretty interesting if it went 3-0 in favor of revolution that would be putting them on a pretty good course for the rest of the losers bracket yeah especially coming out from a really really close match um so that would definitely set them as probably one of the better teams in this uh, lower bracket now. Um, right now, we're just having a second. I believe someone might be uh, taking a break right now. You know, when duty calls, duty calls. I understand that completely. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's the, the fabled bio break. In, in Watcher's history, I don't think there's been a single like week or two days that I've casted where it hasn't been, oh, we got somebody in the, in the, in the restroom. Oh, we got somebody... You know, you know, you know, the restroom is the yeah. more is the more common one. But there have literally been people like, oh, I got a pizza man at the door. I'm going to go. I'll be five <laughs> minutes. And, you know, sure enough, they come back, type in the chat. All right. I got my pepperoni ready to go. And, then, yeah. you know, the games continue. So I'll, no, I'll the, be honest. I'm, I'm guilty of that. I'm guilty of that pizza guy <laughs> one. That's happened to me before. Uh, not while I was casting, but I think we were because ah, I used to play on a team. Right. I believe we were in the middle of a match in the open division and I asked for a pause 
and I said it was an emergency. <laughs> and I came back and they asked what was wrong, and I said, "Oh, my uh, my pizza was out the door." <laughs> and they thought it was funny on their team, thank goodness. But I think they probably could have gotten a little more salty about it and gone out, would have went on a rant. But thankfully, they were they were super kind about it. Whoever the team was that we were facing, I forget. But and very funny. I think it was on Horizon. Yeah, absolutely. With that, you've kind of led me gracefully and perfectly into my classic Waltham question. It, I, it, like every week, I have to ask something about food. What was on the pizza? I need to know. What was on the pizza? Yeah. Uh, I like to put pepperoni, banana peppers, uh, spinach if they allow it. And then sometimes I'll uh, sprinkle on some mushrooms if I'm really feeling it. But mushrooms are very... Uh, it has, it has to be the day for them, but normally <laughs> situational. <laughs> yeah, very situational. But normally it's the pepperoni, banana, pepper, spinach. Oh, it's a little, it's a little bold. It's a little uh, out of the standard, non-meta, non-meta pizza. If I had to say, no. <laughs> yeah. I've I've ordered it before, and someone opened the box and they said, "quote unquote," what the hell is this? <laughs> um. So I told them what was on it, and they ate it. It doesn't. It didn't matter. <laughs> Well, hopefully we're seeing some non-meta comps come out, you know. Um, it, all, all this talk of pizza is making me hungry, but what I'm really hungry for is some good Overwatch. Some How's that for a DPS segue? Yes, play. Yeah, yeah, yeah I absolutely. love that segue. That was great. <laughs> <laughs> and we're going to be seeing, it looks like not quite the meta switch up here from you, Waterloo. They're going to be going up on the triple-triple once again. And, you know... It, I'm disappointed not because, oh, Waterloo's going to do bad or anything like that, but it's like, I just really want to see some mechanical play come through here. And not that there's no mechanical play in the triple-triple, it's just not as highlighted. It's it's yeah. not as it's not as coordinated. It's, 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 not definitely, as it's definitely easy to pick out when they have DPS and you can see them getting all the kills, but when everyone's working so together as a unit here, it's kind of like the whole team gets the kill on the other whole team only when yeah. you see this. Yeah, especially since Demo ran such a good Ash, you think they'd transfer really well onto the Widowmaker here. Yeah, it looks like Jay right now, he's going on a little bit of a scouting mission. I don't want to see what they have. He's just going to walk his way over to the point, not quite seeing much yet. Sees the Zen, sees the Brig up there. And right now, they're not really engaging too much on it. Looks like they're coming in with the Phara, though. Phara Mercy. They might be still trying to go in with this. I don't know, they seem very hesitant, but they're walking their way in. Matt getting yeah. anti so he can't quite jump up there yet, knowing that he will probably be collapsed on too. But Max can go up there now. All alone, he drops back down on the point. Lax getting d -mecked. Spade's now going up top to try to do something against At. Good sleep on the Mac from At right now. He's just going to be holding on this point. Mac is relatively useless right now. Spade's up there, not quite able to eat that uh, grenade. So they're going to both get anti next fight down. Badges takes down Momo. Mac taking down Atho. Fix coming out from both sides. Hanging out on that bridge right now. Mac's going to drop down on the badges. But right now, it's not looking too good for him. There was a lot of people there. Spades, though, able to take off badges at the top. Damo taking down Mac. Fix just coming in left and right from either side. Of course, high key yeah. from far away, just dropping in those, uh, those rocks. <laughs> slowly back out. Wait for the team to be regrouped. Yeah, and I like the, the I guess you could say, some of the theory behind this Farah pick. If you know there's a lot of people on that high ground and they're really going to try to utilize that high ground, the Concussion Blast can absolutely dislodge people as well. You don't have to worry about, you know, having the high advantage you're going to. And some big grabs coming out. Or big yeah. EMP. EMP got two. At able to sleep high key. Damo got taken down by that barrage. But it definitely looks like it is uh, going to be in the side of Waterloo right now. Just able to make them all go back. I think um, what probably would have made it better there is since they were all sitting in that little room, stay on the point and just try to draw them out a little bit more and wait to use their EMP. But I think maybe he saw an opportunity, went for it, and maybe they just barely broke line of sight. Uh, looks like Haiki is going to be coming back in here with his Mercy Pocket Seamus. Slowly making their way in here, just targeting badges up on the high ground, standing on the point. Of course, we see Jay over now on the Widow. Badge is getting nanoed, targeting what seems to be Spades. He's gonna go in actually for Mac now. Lacked, putting some pressure onto the far up on the top right. But now Mac's getting the nano. Self-destruct coming in from Spades. Mac just trying to focus someone down, but Nexify nullified that nano with his uh, transcendence. 
Damo able to pick off Momo, that's pretty big. But of course, he's just able to get Rez right back up. Thankfully, the Mercy is there, ready safely to Rez him. Haiki able to take out Damo. You're getting onto the point. Haiki using his self destruct or his barrage. But now he's just slept again. That's twice he's been slept with that. But Badge is going down. Looks like Revolution might be able to take this right now. Mac going in the back, targeting both of the supports. Lacked, getting anti nated. Not what you can do except just hold that right click and just hope. But unfortunately, hoping isn't enough because Revolution is going to take the point. Yeah, Jai seemed to be, you know, not the most efficient on that Widow. I don't think we saw a whole lot of kills get opened up by that Widow, but it still presented a lot of a threat by Sightline, which is something that you can definitely manipulate, especially if the other team's aware of how strong your sniping power is. Mm -hmm. Badge got nanoed and he got slept. But because Mac landed on him, he woke up. He's targeting Momo right now really hard. He's anti and he's getting really low, so he's going to have to back up. Nano, come back out on the Mac, able to get Damo. Spades with a crazy bomb from downtown, able to pick off At. And right now they're just going in for it. Spades able to take off badges. High key, finally able to not get slept during one of his barrages. Able to take a lag out of his mech and kill Baby Diva. Jay getting the pick off to the Zen, super far away. Damo just trying to get in here, stall for as long as he can. Right now, Mac is sleeping. Spades anti. Is anyone going to be able to make it to the card in time? Or the point in time, pardon me. Uh, looks like Lax is going to be able to. Doomfist coming out, just trying to get that stall in right now. I think they know that they won't be able to make it back to this, but they're trying to hold it as long as they can, and that they did. They held it as long as they could, but unfortunately, it wasn't long enough. They got 338 left right now for the set of revolution. Yeah, I was watching uh, the Widow, the offensive Widow, for most of that fight. The Widow went untouched, and that is, you know, when, when it's 6v6, it's an annoyance to have to deal with a Widow that's so far away. But when you start losing those numbers, it becomes exponentially worse because that Widow can just take more and more free shots as you have more and more things distracting the, the fewer people you have on the field. And I think that, you know, Jai you know, really, again, playing to those strengths of just kind of oppressing, you know, the massive sight lines. We didn't see any massive pop-off plays, but working in coordination with the team, you know, it looked like the calls were definitely there. They'd get body shots, they'd land a headshot, didn't fully kill, and they'd call it out. The target would be followed up on. It looked pretty consistent, but now we're going to be seeing how that works with them on the defense. Yeah, right now it looks like you're going to be going for a little bit of a bunker over here on the side of Revolution where uh, they're actually switching out the Bastion, it seems, for the Torb. They're going to run an Ana Mercy, which is normally... Uh, I don't I don't personally see this a lot. Normally, you do see the Baptiste in an Ana, or a Baptiste in a Mercy, but never the Ana and the Mercy. Uh, so they don't really have that much of a defensive ultimate, but all these players do uh, really have good, like, um, what sort I'm looking for, self-sustain. Uh, with Haiki just able to press his, uh, ult uh, not his ultimate, his uh, overload ability and overload. Yes, thank you. I couldn't remember yeah. it. No problem. I still, yeah, it's still new to me, okay? <laughs> Even, I don't care how long it's been out. Uh, but it looks like they're going to go for a 2 2 on the side. Waterloo. Badges thrown down the little barrier, just making his way through. Uh, not too much happening right now. They're still trying to look for a good opening. See over on the side here. Spades taking on the fight with badges and Vexinus. And looks like there's not going to be much coming out of that. Oh, they're going to decide to go in badges. Completely in now, lacked. Trying to uh, just put up some self-defense for him, but he gets slapped and then TNT'd. So now they're just getting pushed back. Damo actually able to get the pick off on Jay. Everyone forgot about the Widow, so they just decided to go ahead. Hey, why not? I'll pick off someone really quick, and now they're going to have to use the res on that. So they might not have res for the next fight, depending on how fast they engage. Yeah, it's really going to uh, be coming down to how quickly Waterloo is able to kind of get recollected, regrouped here. And if they're able to take advantage, as you said, of any more headshots, which, you know, Haiki going to be brought down immediately by Damo. Yeah, there's no way they're going to be able to res that one. Damo with an amazing shot. Vex is able to take out Jay, actually. So right now, it looks like they're going to be able to take this first point. They got a lot of picks. Badge is sleeping on the point, though. Sleeps from both of these coming out really good. But a good anti-nade is able to be what's going to take out that Ana. Badge is getting taken down himself, though. Spades really just trying to help him out. Damo throwing in those shots like they're nothing. Seems just going on a point. Die as fast as possible to hurry up and get back to his team. 
Yeah, and you know, it looks like it's gonna be first. Yeah, and you know, I I like this. And once again, we're seeing Waterloo be pretty successful when they're not running something that's a a strict triple triple. In fact, you know, they're they're running something very not triple triple. They're running a little bit more divey of a setup. And I like it. I like the look from this team when they run those <laughs> those non-standards, I, I feel like a broken record saying it, but it's because it never becomes less true. <laughs> yeah, definitely. And the Nanoblade coming through, he's going to be able to pick off Momo. He's then he's going to be able to go over to high key. He's going to take him out. He's also going to take out that turret with that slash. Targeting on a Seamus. He popped his ult very hard to get that Mercy. Just flying around like that. Able to get the res off onto high key. Jay picking off Nexify. Vex is, of course, getting taken out. Spades. d lacked. Badge is taken down. Damo able to get another headshot, though, onto high key. Not going to really be able to save the fight, though. He's going to be collapsed on and, of course, killed. And that's uh, one fight over on the side of the future. Yeah, and I like the way the Revolution played that. They It looks like they were expecting that Genji Blade to come out, so they didn't put all their eggs in one basket. They had everybody kind of spread out. Yeah, we saw a couple members fall uh, from their side. High key, I believe it was Momo as well, takes the cut. Um, but Seamus was nowhere to be found, which enabled them to kind of come in post de facto, get the res up. Uh, and really kind of recover that fight. It just did not seem like Waterloo was able to get as much value as they really needed to by the time the collapse happened. Mm -hmm. uh, and it looks like they're gonna be making a couple swaps here. Damo from the Widow to the McCree, and then uh, Badges switching over to the Rhine. Good Ooh. Pulse Bomb coming in from Jay. He just go ahead, spread in there. Let me just leave this right here. And of course, they're just gonna grab that, not knowing what it is, and boom, blows up right in their face. Jay able to take down Badges now. Ike able to get at. So they're just going to clean up this fight now with a great pulse bomb to start it off and just completely take it over. Yeah, and it's so crucial that that's going to allow them to keep that ult economy. You know, they use just one pulse bomb. It builds up rather quickly. And we look, Waterloo didn't get to build up a whole bunch at all either. They're still going to be having lacked with that diva bomb. But really, aside from that, nobody's anywhere near ults. It's still looking really good for the next couple of fights just for ult, uh, ult economy on Revolution side alone. Yeah, playing super aggressive right now. Jay's able to pick off at Mac, able to get two people using his primal badges and Nexify. Good nade coming out from Momo. Sending him all the way back to spawn. They decided to get super aggressive there. You can see that Mac and Jay were just sitting over uh, in corners, just hiding, waiting for them to come through and just target their back line. And that's exactly what they did. Target the back line, take it out. Sweep the legs out from underneath somebody, they're going to fall. And that's exactly what happened there. Yeah, indeed. And now we're seeing the switch onto the Hammond. I like it, but the nano boost might be a little much as Max going to probably tear up the back line. Yeah, At getting taken out. They knew they had a backup there. And At was just in an unfortunate position where he was just kind of hoping, like, maybe I can just stay alive here. But everyone's going to notice him and take out the poor old grandma. Yeah, and still we're not seeing a whole lot of ults be built up for Waterloo. It's, these have just been such short, small, and brutal losses for them that really we're only seeing two, three ults be built up in the entire time since uh, they really kind of switched majorly here. Now they're going to have to use the Transcendence just to counter the Dragons. Yeah, anti Nate coming out on his spades now. Everyone's really looking for picks. The Ham getting really in there. Another Nanoblade coming out. It was pretty good last time. He was able to pick off Momo. Damo able to get high key. That's just looking like he's going to be able to get anybody else. He slashed on the winds to make him super low. Able to pick him off. Simos rezzing high key though. Jay getting that enemy zen like he needs to. It looks like high key's going to be able to pick off another two. Good on him. Hammond coming in here trying to do something. But good anti nades not going to be able to uh, let them continue capturing the point here probably. Revolution slowly making their way back in here. And they got a tick. It looks like it could uh, just stagger lacked a little bit. Just let him walk all the way back, maybe pick him off at the end. But they only got a tick out of that. They were really hoping to get that second tick, I imagine. That would have been pretty nice to get, but it doesn't look like it was meant to be. Really close, but not quite. Yeah, they really need to start organizing. If their win condition is to get two more fights that involve a Genji Nanoblade, that is going to be a lofty order. They might have to start rethinking how they're gonna to wanting to they how they want to take these fights moving forward. Yeah, it looks like that they pulled out the Sombra now for that Hammond, and Hammond just has to a bunch of shots taken out of Mac, it'll take out Nexify, Spades, taking out the Hammond, all that. So right now, I think the Sombra pick is probably very good uh, for the side of Revolution. I mean, there's not much you can do against a Sombra if you're a Hammond. You just get hacked and you're pretty much just free alt charge. Yeah, the the switch here is gonna gonna really make a lot of sense. Badge is getting hacked very early into this fight already. Mm -hmm. At already be taken down. 
Next five, taken down next. Momo able to get that pick onto him. Vex just able to D-Max Spades. Damo getting Mac. Jay picking off badges on that Hammond, of course. Vex just able to take out Spades in his baby Diva form. And they're just gonna send them back to spawn. Maybe they rethink some things. Maybe they want to change some things up, shake it up. But they have a lot of alts to use right now. So right now, it looks like they can't really make that many changes because they won't have those. Jay with his EMP, really looking for a good one. Looks like he's about to use it here. He's getting really close. Okay, he's gonna wait for them to go into the corridor. But he's not gonna be able to get that Genji. The Genji's able to pick off Momo. Jay gonna take down my Nexify. The mines to kind of prevent them from walking back to point. They're gonna have to take their slow time here. Spades just throwing in that self destruct able to pick off badges. Damo got high key somewhere in the mix there. Looks like Matt's jumping on the point with his primal. Just pushing back the Genji now. Vexinus able to get taken out by Mac. 20 yeah, seconds left. Not much to use here on the really, side. Waterloo. Really not. We're going to have to see some rather explosive play if they want to start making it work. They're going to have to get some massive benefit with that Diva Bomb or the Dragons or just get some really efficient picks. But Jaya on this May might make these difficult days before the early picks start coming through. Good grief. That might be what they needed. Damo is just absolutely getting picks right now. Uh, self destruct wasn't able to get much. Hanzo Walt's on the point. Looks like they're going to be able to pick off that second tick. Seamus is going to have to drop on point by himself because no one's quite there to test it yet. Momo's just trying to pocket him, but Damo gets that pick again. At gets the pick on a spades. Damo gets another pick on a Momo. He's going insane right now, just popping off people's heads like they're nothing. Shooting arrows like shooting the apple. I don't know why it's just shooting an apple. Yeah, you shoot arrows with an arrow. <laughs> they're able to get the point right there. I can't, I can't believe that uh, they got it, but they didn't get it with any time, I'm pretty sure. I could be wrong. No, that was yeah, no it was time. overtime. So the best they can get right now is a draw. And with 338, I think they might be able to hold it. But they're going to have to be able to hold it pretty darn well. Because they got pretty much the whole time of a normal round on the side of Revolution. So what we'll see come out from Waterloo, I'm not quite sure yet. But I'm excited to see this defense. They'll be trying their hardest, I'm sure, as they've been this whole match. And it'll be very interesting to see. I'm sure Revolutions want to get it over with. They just want this victory. They know it's so close. But Waterloo isn't going to give it to him without a fight. And it looks like they're going to be going for maybe a four. No. Maybe triple DPS and a bunker. Oh, it, it looks seems. like it might be the uh, the Clockwork Vendetta style comp we're seeing in Torb, uh, May, Hog. It's very peculiar. Curious to see if the team will be able to make it work. Uh, badges on that Ash, kind of a little bit of the, the mix up here. A little bit of a mix up. You always got to want to add your own little thing to it. And I'm kind of curious to see how this one will go. I imagine that they'll be able to hold this fairly well. Uh, I'm sure Revolutions will probably stick to the similar comp they have right now. Uh, it looks like they're going to be going with the Sombra. Sombra Roadhog, Orisa. I imagine they're just on a little bit of a uh, lookout for Jay. Yeah, it looks like this is what they want to do. It's a little bit different of a comp. It's kind of a bunker goats, sort of. Uh, he's going to try to go in for the pull. Not able to get anything. He's going to collapse over onto this uh, right side here. They're just slowly making their way up. They know that they have the main. They really don't want to get walled off and picked off individually. But that TNT, that's a big TNT. That's going to be a lot of alt charge for badges. Yeah, we're and seeing... They know that they got to go to point now because of Jay. Yeah, Jay gets forced off. Making their way. Another big TNT. Yeah, it's, it's ooh, amazing separation coming through from Vexo. That is a crucial. A couple of Jay getting brought dangerously low there, too. That is uh, that is a tough spot for that Sombra to be in. Yeah, definitely. And what we saw there was really just a lot of TNT damage to kind of make him, like, stay back for a second. And so he's got Bob now for this next fight, which could be really good as long as he doesn't get hacked by Jay. But Jay, of course, is just running around looking to get some uh, ult charge where he can. But it's so hard with that Torb turret, and everyone's just going to turn immediately to him. So what he's probably going to want to do is just keep touching that point and see if they can't make him uh, just drop down on the point and lose that high ground and give it to them. Ooh, Vexen is taking out high key right off the bat. Seamus able to res it, though, of course. And then Mac getting taken down pretty convincingly. As soon as he jumps in there, he's frozen. He just gets shot at. As you can see, four assists coming in with that kill. That's pretty insane. Everyone definitely used what they could to stop him from doing any damage. 
Yeah, and really it only cost a Valk and a Bob. We're still going to be seeing Damo getting pretty close to that Molten Core. Nexify and Vex not really getting a whole lot of ult charge from these fights, but you know, they're, they're certainly doing their job still, even if the ult charges aren't necessarily showing it. Sure, and it looks like Simus using his ultimate to try to go in here. Doesn't look like they're going to be able to do much. Like I said, there's so much sustain with all these characters. Spades getting frozen. Molten Core straight down onto him. This self destructor might be able to pick someone off. No, not quite. Molten Core on the high ground there. He's able to get Spades. EMP is coming out. Gets four, I believe. Five. Oh, wait, that's all six. I only saw four people get it. That was a really good EMP on the side. Uh, Revolution, but it doesn't look like they're going to be able to follow up on that very much. Anti Nade coming out on to Nexify. He's just trying to make his way over to the point back here. And they're going to be able to hold it, even though they had a six-man EMP, probably because of that blizzard, able to slow everyone down and freeze a few people. Jay is Ooh. getting slowly taken down on the high ground right now. And with 49 seconds left, not many else to use quite yet. Uh, they got the Nano Blade, which could be the decider, but that has to be the decider. Uh, because, frankly, I think that's the only ults they're going to be able to use in this next fight, unless they are able to stall it out for a long time somehow. Yeah. And, you know, I want to talk about that Sombra EMP. That was a good EMP. You know, we got six people plus the Bongo. But the fact that it got so many people made the fight draw out even longer, which given that Waterloo won the fight, it kind of just gave, you know, Revolution less time to plan their next push to get, you know, things set up. So it's kind of a double-edged sword when you don't get those big wins and cost yourself a lot of time. Oh, that is not what you want to see coming out. Mac immediately getting taken out by High Key. He's got the Nano Blade. He's able to get next fight. He's able to get Damo. He's down over on the lack. Not quite able to get the pick off onto him now. Vex is taking out Simus J. Getting that headshot on the lack. Bad just getting spades. Really, it's just these two sniper classes kind of going at it. Getting all the picks here. High key Ooh. back on the point. Vexness. Oh, well, guess what? I can snipe too. Ice pick right <laughs> to the brain of Jay. Right now, it's just Mac on the point. I don't think he's going to be able to hold this. I believe that this is going to be a draw. So, very impressed by the side of Waterloo. A great defense. Stopping them from getting even a single tick. That's all they needed, and that's all they prevented. Yeah, yeah, that was well played by Waterloo. It's, of course, going to be uh, the draw, you know, ending in a 2-2, two two, if I'm not mistaken. But was uh, impressive to say, to see such a, uh, what I would call a pretty monumental hold. That was, that. that's not something we see that often, where you have to hold just just a third for three and a half minutes that was that was impressive yeah and i think what really made it for him was simus had to have that good positioning so that way he wouldn't get picked off because if uh he got picked up or not simus rather uh at at had to have the good positioning uh to not get picked off considering he was the only support so even though his team had a really good sustain he still had to be able to get in and out of fights and make sure that he wasn't going to be able to get picked off so Really, with that solo support, that's the risk you want. That's the risk you run, and you gotta hope that they're gonna be able to make those right moves. And that's exactly what happened at New, where to go and when to go there. And I think that's really what helped them get this point. And the fact that they were just able to use so many abilities to just instantly take out uh, Mac when he came in. Oh, absolutely. I think that uh, if nothing else, Waterloo gonna be feeling a little bit good about that one. They don't walk away getting fully swept. They at least bought themselves a little bit of a breather. They do have to go to one game, two games, one here, and then win the tiebreaker to, however, bring it back. So, you know, it's it's a, a lot of pressure, but certainly not with uh, outside of the realm of possibility. Yeah, for sure. And I think that maybe uh, what Waterloo will probably do here is they'll look back on what just happened and think to themselves, okay, if that bunker worked before, it could probably work again because they did really well with it. And like I said, really good positioning. So hopefully they'll be able to, uh, you know, kind of take that into consideration for their next team comps and kind of decide, okay, maybe we do want to switch it up off of this 3-3 uh, three, three style. Or maybe they're like, okay, well, we, we kind of cheesed it up there at the end. We're just going to stick to our 3-3. Three, three. Uh, completely up to them right now. And it looks like they're going to be banning Junkertown. Okay. Yeah. That would have been, been really nice for Waterloo to have. So, a very good ban idea. Uh, Waterloo now gets to pick the map. Yeah, and, you know, I think that anything that kind of leans away from the 3-3, Waterloo starts to look incrementally better. So, I have to agree, the Junkertown pick, probably, uh, probably pretty savvy on the side of Revolution. 
Yep, and it looks like they're trying to pick a map right now. I think there was a little bit of confusion. Someone said Hana, and I'm not sure if that was uh, a joke or not. I don't know. Who, who, who cares, you know? It's fine. Yeah, it got banned, so we're not going to be able to do it. Can't do two CP twice in a row. Thank God. Um, <laughs> that that would be a, <laughs> a long uh, bout, I'm sure, for both of these teams. Neither one really wanting to go out in you know, the next map or drop the next map. Yeah, it looks like they're going to decide to go possibly Li Zhang, it looks like. Let's see what they have here. Yep, they're going to go Li Zhang Tower. Hmm. Now, Li Zhang Tower, Control Center is really uh, GOATS biased, I feel like. And then on the other two, you can kind of run a little bit of different stuff. Um, but right now, we're going to have the Save Hero coming out from Revolution, see what we can have there. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm excited to see what they might pull out here on some of these other maps. Do you think there's going to be any, like, dps coming out i know that on gardens it's very open so we probably will see some dps out there if any map definitely that map is where we're going to see them yeah um uh, yes i think we're going to be seeing some dps i think that's potential but i think that aside from maybe something like the farah or a widow to counter farah mccree something along those lines in garden I think that may is kind of one of those things we might see on command center control center i always forget the name of the sub map but um, that's definitely something we might see come out. The May walls have a lot of potential there. Um, I don't like saying damage, because when you say May to me, it doesn't speak high volumes of damage. More <laughs> so, her, her value is kind of from, you know, just telling people to, you know, hey, go take a different route. We're, we're taking one of your teammates, by the way. They're they're with us now. And, oh, hey, now they're not with us. They're dead. Um, oh. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, we're actually going to be seeing D.Va get knocked out of the selections here. So she's not going to be able to be picked for Li Zhang, which makes me think, you know, May even more likely if we do go to that command center. Yeah, May maybe a Sombra in place. And um, far, far a more likely far. on Gardens. Yep, but it looks like we're starting right here on Night Market. One of my favorite maps in the game from when I was a gold Lucio scrub. Uh, <laughs> I just loved getting boops on this map, but you can't quite boop people off as easily in Masters now. So, <laughs> I don't know. It's, it's tough, man. It's a hard knock life for us. <laughs> As the greats have once said, but we're going to be seeing what the team's going to roll out with. I'm sure this D.Va ban might kind of shift things up a little bit, just, just a touch. And uh, yeah, it's now we're seeing Waterloo start to ban these heroes that are more instrumental to the, the triple triple style. So I, I kind of like it. And we're seeing at least at the gate quite a few DPS from the side of Waterloo. Yeah, you got to think, are they going to stick with this? There's always that possibility that they do. I wouldn't see why they might not want to use it uh, because it's a fairly good comp right now. It's mobile. Lax should be able to get off some picks if he really wanted to. Uh, to Hammond, boot people around, Nexify on that Hanzo. And it looks like it's going to be the standard goats with the Sombra on the side of Revolution. Meanwhile, it's uh 4 one one on the side of Waterloo. Badge is already taking out Seamus. Oh, man. It wasn't even uh, boosted with any rockets, so that was pretty good. He must have gotten two good hits on Umdama, Ooh. taking out spades as well already. And that's going to make him go back and think, do, do we want to stay on this 3-3? And it looks like they're going to change a couple things up. They're going to go Winston and Moira, which is very good against uh, a comp like this where it's DPS heavy. Next fight, almost get taken out, but Dama's able to get Jay before he is able to take him out. Good and grief. they're going to be able to cap the point here. Man. These DPS are coordinating so well. They just seem to be so in sync. As soon as, you know, Badges hit some big damage, the follow-up seems to almost certainly be there from Damo. Vexen is kind of <laughs> just hanging out in the cut. Not really a whole lot yet as that Doomfist. Yeah, they know that they're coming from up top. Badges got hacked, though. That's going to be their time. They're going to all go in on Badges for sure there. Jay able to pick him up. Last getting stunned. He's going to have to pop his shield. Hurry up and try to back away. At just pocketing Damo right now, and he's able to get the pick on to Mac. And Spade's able to get Nexify. They're on to the point now. At being able to res him. Not sure how much they can do here. They have the point, so it's going to be a little tough. Spades gets at Damo, gets it's J. High key. Getting the pick on to the enemy ham and lacked. High key also getting a pick on a Nexify. And on a Vexinus and on a Damo. High key with a 4K. Very impressive by him. Yeah, this uh, this McCree switch seemed to be just what the doctor ordered for this side. 
of revolution here. And the McCree almost going to have that high noon. It's going to make it very dangerous for that pharmacy combo to stay in the sky for too long. Uh, but Badge is going to be having that rocket barrage in kind. So kind of a little bit of a trade off there. I like Jai on this Sombra though. There's a lot of targets weak to uh, Sombra on the Waterloo end. Yeah, and it looks like Vex is just going on to the right side. Just kind of doing his own thing, seeing what they can get out of it. Jay is just looking for a good opportunity to get some damage in here. Nano Vi or Visor is going to be popped. High noon, completely blocked by that wall. Badge is going in for the barrage. He's able to get high keys. He's going to be able to get anyone else. Doesn't look like it. Vex gets Mac, but At was able to get uh, focused down because he wasn't able to fly to anybody. Spades able to pick off Lax next. Uh, two kills with Badge's and next fight getting Momo and Seamus. And I think that's going to be the point. Oh, they're going to decide to commit a grab to this. I don't know if that's because he's thinking of changing or if he felt like he really could have gotten that one. He was high charge. But he was able to pick up Nexify, and they're coming back in here now. And since they're down one, it should be a little bit easier for him. This mine's coming out, and it looks like Revolution is actually going to be probably able to take this point back here. What seemed like kind of a risky, didn't really work grab, maybe could have actually saved them that point there. Badge getting a pick on a Momo, though. Damo getting Seamus, high key. Nexify, the spades getting Damo. There's just so many picks coming in and out of these fights that it's insane to try to keep up with it sometimes. <laughs> it really is right now and i know it's just been one map i know it's been like three minutes but i'm already loving the dps play we're seeing come through here it seems so much more fast paced and aggressive from both sides i'm loving damo playing the soldier right now and another attack visor yeah, coming another out. attack visor and the high noon coming out but jay able to pick off vexus and now he's picking off badges mac antinated very very low they might be able to pick him off there spades getting next fight it looks like revolution is going to probably take this map here unless there's a miracle coming through beside of waterloo it doesn't look like there might be able to revolution's got a lot of ults right now high key can lacked and they're just going to press q because they know they got this point yeah may as well lock it down with that <laughs> attempt to lock it down with that may blizzard not going to quite be finding too much success but I really like that. I I enjoyed watching that, that kind of develop. Um, I think that Damo is playing really well. I see a lot of support for them in the chat. But also Heike. Heike, if we're going to talk about DPS players, I don't think we can uh, negate the DPS coming through from the side of Revolution. Absolutely. Uh, it, it took us a while to kind of see them in full effect. But now that we are, I think it's pretty close to well worth the wait. Yeah, I have to agree with you there, man. I mean, it's it's looking pretty good right now. I'm very happy that we get to see so many DPS coming out, and we're getting to see some DPS again. A little bit of a bunker coming out uh, from Waterloo right now. So it's going to be interesting to see if they're going to be able to set up fast enough on that point. Damo leading the charge right now. Spades trying to look for a pickoff. Unfortunately, he wasn't able to get that. No, he can't go in there quite yet. Now he goes in there. Lax gets popped up into the air. High key, taking down the turret, you know, just get it out of the way. It's just something there, you don't want to be there. Next fight with a hook on his spades, he's getting boosted by that mercy damage. It'll take him out fairly fast. Now they're going to be bringing the fight to the point. Next fight with another hook, actually killing Mac with that hook. High key taking out the turret again, but you got to stop taking out the turrets. You got to start taking out people next because <laughs> if you got actual people on the point, you know, they're going to be a little more self aware and understand, you know, who to target exactly. And that's going to be the point taken over by Waterloo. Yeah, absolutely. And right now, I'm again, I'm liking these comps. Nexify with that hog has a lot of CC, as does the Orisa. The Torbjorn's so resilient. If you try to get on him, he pops that overcharge and just absolutely punches. Oh, what a big hook. hook. <laughs> All right, looks like Jay is just going to be on the point, trying to get some damage in there. He's got his uh, ultimate build up now. You can see they've gone back to a standard ghost comp with the Sombra in place of the Diva for, well, obvious reasons, because Diva is banned. Next Fi, not able to get any value out of that hook there, but he's gotten value out of pretty much every other one, so, you know, you can't you can't hit 100% of your shots. Yeah, the danger, oh. danger going to be coming through here with that EMP. Might be having to keep an eye on it. A lot of vulnerabilities coming through, and it's going to only land on three. I believe that actually got four, but they took out Lax so fast. Uh, Damo using his visor, trying to push him back a little bit. Nexify taking out Max Spades, taking out Vexness. And Nexify right now, he's putting in a lot of damage. Sound barrier coming out from the side of Revolution. And they're going to be able to res uh, Vexness, but take out Nexify. Right now, it's looking pretty hard for them on the point. 
He got hacked, so he can't quite use his overload. So he's going to try to hide around the pillar. Badge is in the middle of nowhere. He's got to get out of there as fast as he can. Thank goodness he's able to. But Ad's taken down. You know, you don't really have too much now. It's all about stalling. Just trying to get as much percentage as they can. So that's what they're going to do. They're just going to jump onto that point. Nama's going to have to hurry up and run back. Otherwise, he's going to get picked off. Ah, uh, he's going to get picked off anyway, unfortunately. But now at 90%, though, still a good capture amount. And that's a really good pull coming out from Nexify. <laughs> It'll take out high key immediately. And of course, they can't do anything about that. They don't have the Mercy. And even if they did, they can't res that. That's all the way down there in the water. Mercy would just put herself <laughs> in the situation. Yeah, a lot of ults, however, from the side of Revolution. So hopefully, um, despite that early loss, they might be able to kind of manipulate with the ults. The Battle Bongo coming out early, maybe going to buy some value. Yeah, and it looks like they throw the grab up there to try to get the far, and they did, but on the wrong side of the wall. It's looking pretty hard right now to try to get into this point with this uh, stationary research shield, but Nexify with another great hook, getting Momo. So Vex is taking down, Dama taking down, that's the DPS. Are they going to elect to back up here? I doubt it. I think they still think they're going to be able to win this, depending on how it goes, but a good shatter coming in from Mac. Able to pick off two here, probably from that one. Damo, Lack, down, Nexify, also taken out. Badge is also down. Now it's 90 to 50, you know, you got to think. Are they going to be able to take this? They have the EMP up for this next fight. They'll probably be able to build a grab off of it if uh, they're going to be able to get any damage out. So right now it's looking pretty good for the side of Revolution. I think that this switch onto the Junkrat makes a little bit of sense. They might just be trying to build a quick tire. They can get that tire within the next 30%. They get an early pick into the next fight as the tire, you know, and unless it gets killed by, you know, an errant fire strike or something, not the easiest thing to take out. But a big EMP coming There's out. There's the EMP five. getting four or five. And yeah, they're just going to collapse onto that. There goes lag. There goes Damo. Again, everybody's just getting taken out. They're just doing so good coordinating these pushes when they can. Nexify with that hook, taking out Momo again, though. Next time, this Roadhog is doing amazing work. But unfortunately, they're at 92%. No one was probably going to be able to make it there in time. If anything, it's going to be Damo, but it looks like he got pooped back. And he's actually dead now. The Hammond able to make it to the point in time to make it into overtime. And it looks like everyone's getting back in there. Barrage comes out, but the grab onto him to try to get it. And At also getting caught into that. And Nexify getting the pick on a Momo again. It's just getting these single picks with the Hog, but it's not going to be enough. Shatter coming out for Mac, getting lacked. He's going back over to Badges. It looks like this might be it. Revolution might have this point because I really can't see this going any other way. No one's even near the point, and they're going to take it. Yeah, that will be Revolution taking it 3-0 to zero with a tie. You know, credit to Waterloo where it is due. They did manage to take this to, what would that be, four games instead of the full wipe of three. Uh, oh. going to be Jay getting the POTG. Um, quick yeah. reminder, don't forget to vote in the Twitch chat who you think top player is for today. I believe we might have a little bit of an interview coming in, so definitely get those votes in while we're interviewing so we can let you guys know the top of this match. Yep. Pretty excited to see who would like to come in for the interview. Revolution had a great game. So, should be good. Should be good. And it's looking like, well, a little bit of a discourse going on as to who's actually going to be popping into the chat. Um, so, I think we're just going to kind of sit and wait while we uh, think about it in the chat. It's uh, it's looking like it might be Seamus. I hear that. I see that name coming up in chat a little bit, so we might be seeing them pop in here in just a second. But probably will not be for too long as they say they uh, they got a little bit of a scrim going on, which, you know, I can respect. You gotta, you gotta stay on that grind. You gotta, you yeah. gotta stay in tip-top shape. Scrim right after a match. Alright, that's... Alright, I see you. I see you out here. They're putting in work. <laughs> I can respect that. They're cashing their scrim bucks. They're trying. They're trying to, to build those scrim. And with that, it sounds like we're going to be joined by C Moose. C Moose, thank you for joining us. Uh, thanks for having me. And Abs congratulations on your win here against yeah, Waterloo. Nice thank you. Uh, very, what looked like a dominant match. Your 3 3 did seem to be a little bit better than theirs and you guys were able to really understand when to be aggressive and passive you know uh when do you guys kind of understand to make those calls yeah so it was interesting uh in terms of three three we felt really comfortable and and they threw us for a loop a little bit with the uh with the ban onto the lucio but we recognized that they were using their bubbles really aggressively really early uh, and they were double stacking the bubbles as well they're using both zarya shields 
at the same time. So if you ever see that in a match, uh, that's just the kind of point at which you tell your team, all right, we just wait for that, try to not shoot it as much as possible, and once it's over, just be really aggressive. So we took advantage of that, and at least in the 3v3 matchup, we felt pretty confident that we were just going to beat them on every map and kind of how it played out. Yeah, and uh, on to Anubis. You know, you guys were looking pretty good. You were going through that. You were able to pick off that next point with almost the total four minutes going on, but that defense, uh, that third round, you know, that seemed pretty good on their side. Was there, like, any thoughts of, like, oh, do we want to change it up to something else, or did you guys kind of have any discussion between, okay, maybe we should try this out and maybe didn't, you know, is there anything you can look back on during that and think, okay, we could have done this instead and it would have been better. Oh, absolutely. Uh, I think looking back at it, we have a composition that would have been much better with regards to shield break. Um, initially we went for the somber pick and we, we were in a bit of a weird comp, which was supposed to have the win condition of like the Arisa hog hook pull, uh, for the first fight potentially, and then build up the EMP win condition. Um, and then we swapped to Genji, but that wasn't really working well because we didn't have Lucio. Uh, so, I mean, like I mentioned before, these guys had really, really good hero bands and, and they did a good job of recognizing what we are comfortable on. So they definitely like made us scratch our heads a little bit. Um, but looking back at that situation, uh, without, without leaking it too much, there would have been a shield break comp that also included the Sombra. That would have been a better pick from us, I believe. All right. Uh, is there... Uh... Anything else you'd like to add to this, uh, Waltham? You've been quiet here. Just want to make sure you get in your questions. Yeah, yeah. Um, I guess, you know, we, we see these kind of uh, default roles come out in these team-based, uh, uh, in these in these team-based, you know, matches. But uh, for you personally, Seamus, when you're when you're just you know crawling around on ladder, or when you're in Q QP or you know whatever a, a goof around scrim or whatever, what's your preferred hero to play? Uh, I think my favorite hero to play is definitely McCree. I like the fact that he, he's got utility. Um, he obviously has very high carry potential, but you've mm. got to be smart with him. You know, you can't just like, you have to have some strong sense of positioning as well as the uh, raw mechanics to play him. So I would definitely say he's a he's the hero I like to play uh, for fun the most. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you certainly can't get caught out with McCree. Not a whole lot of mobility to really get you yeah. out of a tight spot if you get jumped on. So makes a lot yeah. of sense. Uh, like I living on the edge. <laughs> I can't say I disagree. He's a he's one of my favorite DPS. Uh, probably nice. second to Farah. Second to Farah, I'd say. Fair enough. Uh, but uh, yeah, I don't know if I have too much. Oh, um, I guess since we're about to uh, be signing off here with our viewer MVP vote, Seamus, did you have any final words or any any shout outs you'd like to give to your team, to the opponents, to anybody at home? Yeah, I mean, uh, big shout outs obviously to the team we played against, uh, the Waterloo guys. We know a couple of them very well. They're really good sports. Uh, Vex especially just came back from a surgery and is playing today, so really credit to you, man. Um, but definitely, like, huge credit to my team, too. Like, we we had a couple of mistakes we did today. I, I made a pretty big misplay on Anubis. Um, but especially after last week, which is, like, a heartbreaking Game 6 defeat. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, very close. Yeah, I was personally pretty pretty upset. You know, I talked to the coach about it, I talked to my teammates about it, I talked to, like, my freaking uncle, my therapist, my cat. Um... <laughs> But it's nice because we're not in OD season right now, so this is like a good chance for us to sort of identify our weaknesses, come back to that, and really work around that. Uh, and I really want to credit my team uh, and everyone who's supporting us because I think today we did a good job of showing you guys like, damn, like we took that loss last week, it sucks, but we're really trying to come out here and do our best as possible. And when we meet, uh, when we meet citizens in uh, the grand finals again, it's definitely going to be different this time around. <laughs> I like hearing that. Uh, I like uh, also hearing that you know teams just. I like seeing the teams improve as they come through these tournaments. I've been doing this for about six months, I think, and that's that's kind of been my favorite part. Those, um, those knock down and get back up moments. The the double mm -hmm. elimination really friendly for that. But with that, Simus, I think we're about ready to wrap it up with our exit interview. But I do want to say thank you for coming in, just yeah, hanging out so with much, us Seamus. for a few yeah. moments. Uh, know you guys got some scrims or some practice to go ahead and get on with. So thank you very much for your time, my friend. Yep. Thanks for having me, guys. See you later. Right. Have a good Absolutely. one. Absolutely. And with that, the last thing to do here is to announce the viewers MVP and Porzak, would you like to do the honors for us? Boy, would I love to. The MVP for this match is going to be at playing that support. He was doing really good. He was able to be aggressive and kind of really show off uh, the plays he had. He was able to have great positioning when playing that Mercy on Anubis to help them hold that, make that map a draw and just bring it in to another map, trying to trying to get their way back. They were crawling. 
unfortunately they weren't able to quite do it but at in my opinion is a great choice for the mvp of course there's a few more in there but at is probably the best choice for this definitely looking back on it he he had the better positioning uh most of the time you know he he understood uh his speed boost and his healing so i i definitely think he deserves it yeah absolutely so once again congratulations to at congratulations to the side of the revolution and you know thank you guys so much for tuning in and joining us for the the Overwatch Watchers Brawl. For your casting pleasure, I have been Sir Waltham. You can catch me on Twitter or Twitch at Sir Waltham and with me. Yep, this has been poor Zach. You can catch me on uh, Twitch uh, at poor Zach. Uh, I got an Instagram if you want to go over to that for some reason. I don't know why. You can kind of see more of my personality, my personal life. You want to try to, I don't know, see what I do. Uh, and yeah, that's pretty much it for me. It was a great match. I can't wait for the next one. Yeah, make sure to catch out those spicy pictures of banana pepper, spinach, and pepperoni pizzas on poor Zach's Insta. I don't take pictures of my food except <laughs> once I made breakfast, and it was really darn good. <laughs> well, with that, folks, we hope to see you for the next game starting here in just about 20 minutes. But if not, we hope you have a great night. Stay safe and take care, everybody.